Well friends, electrodynamics is supposed to be the core subject of electronic science. You will ask core subject, how, why? The questions are quite obvious. Because for a beginner, electronics means circuit, components, devices, appliances, measuring voltages, currents, etc. So with this view, the questions are all right. But actually it is not the case. When we associate a subject electronics with the word science, many dimensions are added to the subject electronic science. We are going to discuss about this issue with special reference to electronic circuits and electromagnetic fields. For many practical applications, we build up many circuits or systems using electrical energy. For that purpose, we use several theorems, mathematical formulae, then concepts, analogies, etc. So all those things are included in the single word called as theory. So for any such electrical systems, which are based on electrical energy, which theory is to be used? There are two theories, electrical circuit theory and electromagnetic field theory. In today's module, we are going to discuss about some of the important aspects of these two theories. After going through the contents of this module, you will be able to know about the basic features of circuit theory and electromagnetic field theory. And in addition, understand the various mathematical tools and techniques of system analysis and designing using circuit and field theory. Along with the application areas of the two theories, you will be able to understand the merits and limitations of the circuit theory. Many a times, for some specific application, we may need to develop some device using electrical energy. For example, for traveling purpose, we may need to develop a vehicle or we may need to have a talk with a distant person without much time delay or we may need to generate electric power from the water in dam, etc. For this, we need to develop some electrical or electronic systems. Two main theories, namely circuit theory and electromagnetic theory are of direct concern with designing of such systems for many real life applications. Let us discuss some important aspects associated with each of these two theories. In circuit theory, we deal with voltages and currents which in general are called as electrical signals. In electromagnetic field theory, we deal with electromagnetic fields, namely electric field, magnetic field, magnetic induction and electric displacement. Both the theories find many applications in diversified fields. Some of the important topics which we need to study as an application part of circuit theory are as listed here. Some of the important applications of field theory are as shown. It be noted that most of them are related with the phenomena of radiation. Circuit theory involves the analytical and synthetic aspects of various systems which may be linear or nonlinear. Linear systems and circuits can be dealt with by many techniques. However, nonlinear systems are relatively difficult to handle. They need numerical and approximate methods for their analysis. The electronic signals can be analog, that is continuous time or discrete time, periodic or non-periodic. The analog circuits can be analyzed using Laplace transform. The discrete time systems are dealt with using Z-transform. The Fourier analysis of periodic and aperiodic signals can be done using the mathematical tools, namely Fourier series and Fourier transform respectively. Circuit theory deals with circuits of different kinds. What do we mean by a circuit? We all are familiar with the terms electrical and electronic circuit. 
Inclusion of semiconductor devices and components is one of the distinguishing features of electronic circuits. For this presentation, by circuit we mean electrical or electronic circuit as per the relevance. A circuit in general can be thought of as a closed assembly consisting of electronic components, devices, probably some measuring instruments, sources of energy, etc. connected with each other using conducting wires. As an example, consider a simple circuit as shown. Many a times we use the term electrical network. There is a slight difference between the two terms namely electrical network and circuit. In a circuit starting from any point we can reach to the same point by using a closed path without retracing any of the previous paths. It may not be a situation with a network. That's why it is said that every electrical circuit is a network but a network need not necessarily be a circuit. The figure illustrates the difference between network and circuit. One question, is it necessary that an electrical circuit must have at least one energy source in it? What do you think? We have to account for many aspects associated with circuits as shown. We have to note the type of energy source in the circuit such as DC, AC, current source, voltage source, etc. We have to note the nature of signals such as time dependent, time independent, periodic, non-periodic, continuous time that is analog or discrete time, linear, non-linear, etc. In addition, the technical specifications and physical and electrical properties of different types of components and devices included in the circuit such as resistor, capacitor, inductor, diode, etc. must be known to us. We have to note the mathematical tools needed for circuit analysis or synthesis. The basic physical variables involved in the circuit theory are voltages and currents. Circuit analysis and synthesis are the two main aspects of circuit theory. The main objective in circuit analysis is to determine the distribution of electrical energy supplied by the sources across different components of the circuit. This can be done by determining voltages across and current through different elements in the circuit. It is assumed that the constitutional details and values of circuit elements are known to a priori. How to determine these two quantities namely voltages and currents? As an example, let it be required to determine the current distribution in a DC resistive circuit consisting of two meshes and three loops as shown here. For determining these quantities, we make use of some laws. Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws are the two basic laws used for analyzing simple linear circuit. It be noted that Kirchhoff's current law is based on conservation of electric charge while Kirchhoff's voltage law is based on conservation of electrical energy. This fact implies that circuit theory is useful to analyze the conservative systems and circuits only. It cannot deal with analysis or design of non-conservative systems. Depending upon the nature of components, namely linear or non-linear, we have to adopt the appropriate mathematical methods for circuit analysis. If the graph of current through and voltage across an element is a straight line, then the component is known as a linear component. Ohm's law, namely V equal to IR, serves as a firm basis in the case of linear or piecewise linear elements of the circuit. If the circuit consists of large number of meshes and sources of energy, how to analyze it with respect to currents and voltages associated with its various elements. One can easily understand that direct use of Kirchhoff's laws is not a good choice. So we develop some special methods of analysis namely loop current, mesh current and nodal voltage method. 
each of these methods has its own merit. It be remembered that these methods are based on Kirchhoff's laws. The methods are suitable for computer aided analysis. Use of spice can also be done effectively for analysis. In circuit theory, while applying the mesh or loop analysis, the initially assumed directions of current may be arbitrary. The true directions of currents, however, are known at the end of actually solving the problem. As an example, let us see how mesh current or loop current method can be used to determine the current distribution in a DC resistive circuit consisting of two meshes and three loops as shown. Let I1, I2 be the mesh currents through meshes A, B, F, G, A and B, C, D, F, B respectively, which can be determined by standard method. Note that the actual direction of current I2 is exactly opposite to that of initially assumed one. For analyzing the same circuit by loop current method, assume loop currents I1 and I2 through the loops A, B, F, G, A and A, B, C, D, F, G, A respectively. These currents can be determined by standard method. The results are as shown. Note that the actual direction of current I2 is exactly opposite to that of initially assumed ones. For simple DC resistive circuits, the analysis can be done very easily. But how to deal with circuits which incorporate time varying sources of energy like sinusoidal, ram, staircase, etc. In addition, while applying Kirchhoff's laws, the instantaneous voltages across components like capacitor or inductor may be in integral or differential form. Thus, the circuit analysis may involve differential equations. Use of spatial transform known as Laplace transform can be done for analysis of such circuits. One more important aspect of circuit analysis is the time mode in which the energy is supplied. Is it a continuous time mode or discrete time mode? The supply voltage may be sampled using a sampling switch. In such a case, the circuit equations involving voltages and currents will be difference equations and not differential equations. How to solve such difference equations? Some mathematical tools must be thought of. Thus, we have Laplace transform for continuous time systems and Z transform for DT that is discrete time systems as powerful mathematical tools for circuit analysis. We may think that circuits with time varying components can be dealt with on similar lines with a care to find potential drop across inductor and resistor with due consideration for their time dependence. As an example, see the LR circuit with time varying inductor. I will advise to review the literature to account for very important aspects about such circuits. Generally, most of the systems having small physical dimensions as compared with the wavelength of the signal applied make use of lumped components. We can think of electrical quantities like resistor, capacitor, inductor, etc. associated with them as lumped quantity. In other systems, having larger physical dimensions of components or systems as compared to wavelength, we have to think of the distributed nature of the components. In circuit theory, we cannot forget filters. Any unwanted signal in the original signal is known as noise. Before processing the electrical signal using analog or digital signal processing system, it is essential to eliminate or at least minimize such a noise. The electronic filters designed using mathematical tools and components form an inherent part of circuit theory. Designing of filters needs to know about 
the frequency contents their amplitudes and phases in the signal the frequency analysis known as fourier analysis of the electronic signals of any type can be done using fourier transform or fourier series as per the type of signal in most of the real life applications sinusoidally time varying signals are used in the case of sinusoidal signals the analysis of circuits can be done in a simplified manner using the concept of phasor phasors are complex numbers different types of network theorems can be used to simplify the analysis of a black box by the phrase black box we mean any electrical circuit or system with at least two terminals the internal constitution of which may not be known to us completely for example we may know that there are 20 resistors 10 capacitors 5 dc batteries etc but we do not know their values and the way in which they are interconnected with each other or we may be able to see the internal connections but do not know the values of all the individual components thevenin's theorem and norton's theorem in this case can be used for analysis of such black boxes with one port which consist of linear and bilateral elements in a bilateral element the voltage current relationship is the same irrespective of the direction of current through it besides these two theorems we have other theorems as shown each one having its own peculiarities for example telegin's theorem is used for many types of networks such as linear or non linear passive or active hysteric or non hysteric to analyze n port network we can use the concept of parameters for example consider a two port network as shown we do not know anything about the internal constitution of the network what we can do is to measure the four quantities from outside namely currents i1 i2 entering or leaving from the input and output terminals and the voltages v1 v2 across the input and output terminals of the network these four quantities namely i1 i2 v1 v2 can be related with each other through a set of four constants these constants bear names depending upon their units thus accordingly we can have y parameters h parameters z parameters abcd parameters etc note that the network must be linear and should not include any dependent voltage or current source in it as an example see how the h parameters are defined in terms of measurements done under open circuit and closed circuit conditions note that the parameters have different dimensions for example h11 is impedance while h22 is admittance the other two are dimensionless hence the name hybrid parameters as long as such measurements of voltages and currents are possible the use of network parameters has relevance however what to do if it is meaningless to talk about the measurements of voltages and currents at the input and output terminals such conditions arise especially when we deal with microwave devices like waveguides here we define new types of parameters namely s parameters that is scattering parameters to deal with such a system s parameters are based on the concept of electromagnetic field theory transient analysis is an important aspect of circuit analysis whenever an input is applied to an electrical circuit the desired response is obtained after some time the time taken by the system to show the desired response or expected response is called as transient time of the system friends internal facilities of availing computer software 
for online solution of differential equations of various types or plotting graphs can be used for designing your own circuits on similar lines for better understanding of the computational aspect in transient analysis of electrical circuits. Let us see an example for understanding the transient and steady state response of electrical circuit. See these two circuits. In both of these circuits, we may expect the current in the circuit to have sinusoidal form because the input voltage is sinusoidal. However, such a response is observed after some time. You may try this solution. Rather, I will advise to use the online internet sources providing computational facilities for the same. Generally, we expect the transient time to be as small as possible. Selection of proper values of the components is a big challenge for the circuit designer to obtain desired transient time. Sometimes we may expect the transient time to be moderately small but not zero. Can you imagine what will happen if the speed of your vehicle or two-wheeler attains its speed instantaneously or becomes zero as soon as you stop the two-wheeler? One can understand that speed should increase or decrease to the desired value with less time but not in zero time for safe driving. For this reason, the vehicles are tested for their transient response for different input voltages before their design is finalized. Study of time response of LCR circuit to a sinusoidal input is an important topic in circuit analysis. Four types of responses namely undamped, critically damped, underdamped and overdamped can be achieved with proper selection of the values of L, C and R. These terms can be better understood if you compare the circuit response with that of a small door shutter used at the entrance of an officer's cabin due to a fault in its damping assembly. Mathematical modeling of different types of electronic systems and circuits is a very attractive feature of circuit theory. Electronic systems can be modeled in three ways, differential equations, transfer function and state variables. When we are interested in knowing the functioning of the internal units, then we model the system in terms of a set of differential equations. The system can be studied by solving these differential equations. If we are interested in knowing only the input output relationship, then the system can be modeled by using the concept of transfer function. And if we are interested in knowing the state of each and every node of the circuit simultaneously that is at a given instant, then the system can be modeled by using state variable approach. These three are called as mathematical models of electronic or electrical systems. Generally, Using the concept of analogous physical quantities, we can convert many physical systems finally into an equivalent LCR circuit. The analysis of such equivalent LCR circuit can be correlated to the actual parameters of the original physical system. To understand the meaning of analogous physical quantity, let us consider two expressions namely one for force in mechanics and the other for voltage across an inductor from electromagnetics. Here the equations are from two different branches of physics. However, mathematically they are of the same form namely y is equal to k into dx by dt. Thus by comparison of the two equations we can say that the quantity mass in mechanics is analogous to inductance in electromagnetics. Electric current is analogous to velocity in mechanics. Force in mechanics is analogous to voltage. It be noted that analogies may not be unique. For example, comparing the expression for kinetic energy of a particle 
of mass m moving with velocity v with the energy stored by a capacitor with capacity c and potential difference v we can have mass analogous to capacitance while potential difference will be analogous to linear velocity by such comparisons we can obtain many such analogies useful for conversion of physical equations from one branch to another in the literature it can be found that many research workers have made use of the concept of analogous physical quantities for miscellaneous studies such as the heat lost out of a single residential pan glass window of a hall or the phenomena of upward transportation of water by a plant etc electrical analogs of some of the physical quantities are as shown see the comparison of a system of lever with fulcrum in mechanics with its analogous representation with opam based electronic circuit you may try to develop your own examples of this type on similar line if the graph of current through and voltage across an element is not a straight line then the component is known as a non linear component for example diode is a non linear component other examples of non linear components include transistor iron core inductor transformers with saturated core etc mixers digital logic circuits radio receiver detectors rectifiers relaxation oscillators are the examples of non linear circuits non linear systems do not obey the principle of superposition they may exhibit miscellaneous properties such as chaos and limit cycle non linear systems are closely related with many real world systems and are characterized by non linear differential equations which are relatively difficult to solve non linear systems do not have a solution in closed form numerical and approximate methods are to be adopted for their solution in the literature you will find many types of non linear differential equations think about the way to obtain such physically meaningful non linear differential equations the linear circuits are important because of their ability to produce distortion less output amplifiers differentiators integrators and many electronic filters are some of the examples of linear circuits note that linearity of the system is to be tested using the principle of superposition which in its mathematical form is as shown though some devices or components are non linear in nature for small amplitudes of the signal they behave as linear ones in such a case the tools for analysis of linear circuits and systems can be employed safely due to this linearization of a non linear system has become one of the important and technical feature of circuit theory friends so far we have discussed mainly about different features of circuit theory now let us discuss some important aspects of electromagnetic field theory that is field theory as mentioned in the beginning in electromagnetic field theory the main physical quantities are the vector fields d b e and h which are related with the corresponding charge densities through maxwell's equations as shown these vector fields are just like the input scalar quantities voltage and current in circuit theory lorentz force is the main force to be accounted for in field theory the propagation of electromagnetic energy is described in terms of a vector quantity known as pointing's vector s bar expressed as a vector product of electric field and magnetic field a theorem accounting for a fraction of electromagnetic energy of the incoming wave lost per second in overcoming the resistance of the medium and the storage of the remaining energy in the medium 
in the form of electromagnetic energy is known as pointing vector theorem. This is one of the basic building blocks of electromagnetic field theory. Some of the important differential equations in electromagnetic field theory, one of them namely the equation of continuity is the fundamental equation of physics and must be satisfied in every physically acceptable phenomena. The electromagnetic fields can be discussed in terms of electromagnetic potentials which are the solutions of Poisson's equation. The physical quantities from which the fields can be derived are known as the corresponding potentials. For example, phi is electric potential, A bar is magnetic vector potential. Besides magnetic vector potential A, we can have a magnetic scalar potential as well. The electric and magnetic potentials can be computed from the corresponding electric charge density and the current density by solving Poisson's equation. For time varying charge densities rho and current density j, the electromagnetic fields also will be time varying. Let P be the field point that is the point at which the potential is to be evaluated with respect to origin O as shown. The physically meaningful solution of corresponding potential phi and A at point P can be obtained as shown. Electromagnetic field propagate with finite speed c and hence the time taken by the fields to reach from the source to the field point is non-zero. Accordingly, for determining the potential at a point P at time t, we have to consider the source densities at an earlier time. Hence, these potentials are called as retarded potentials. If the observation point is near to the source, then we can neglect such retarding effect. It be noted that the charge density rho in general consists of mainly three parts namely free charge density, polarization charge density and fixed charge density. Similarly, the current density j in general will comprise mainly of three types namely free or conduction current density, polarization current density and magnetization current density. Besides the physical property like conductivity, the medium is characterized by the two electromagnetic properties namely electric permittivity epsilon and magnetic permeability mu. These two quantities determine the speed of propagation of electromagnetic waves in the medium. One of the important quantities related with electromagnetic radiation is known as radiation resistance. In accordance with the well known result namely accelerated charge radiates energy, the energy lost by the electrons result in appearance of an effective resistance at the feed point of antenna known as radiation resistance. The energy lost due to radiation resistance is converted into electromagnetic waves. Estimation of the radiation resistance and the two regions namely near zone or induction zone and far zone or radiation zone depends upon the wavelength of the signal and geometry of antenna. This frequency dependence can be derived by using the theorems of electromagnetic field theory and not by circuit theory. Some of the points of comparison between the circuit theory and field theory are as shown. It be remembered that circuit theory cannot analyze radiation phenomena. Field theory is useful for any range of frequency while circuit theory has frequency limitations. Circuit theory can be described as an approximation of field theory. It cannot analyze 
थ्री स्पेस फिनोमिना In spite of many limitations, circuit theory is practically useful, popular, and simple for applications as compared to field theory. While applying electromagnetic field theory. we have to think about the system as a whole and search for self consistent solution circuit theory on the other hand can be seen as cause and effect based theory features regarding size and shape dependence of some phenomena like resonance damping of circuit etc at very high frequencies cannot be explained using circuit theory one should refer to the literature pertaining to research work in this regards friends after going through the comparison between the two theories you must be having some questions in your mind you may ask we are not talked anything about magnetic energy can't we have magnetic circuits with a law similar to ohm's law are the two theories namely circuit theory and field theory related with each other if yes how we will try to get the answers of such questions in the next module well friends let us summarize by saying that circuit theory deals with measurement of voltages and currents which are the scalar quantities while field theory deals with vector quantities like electric field magnetic field magnetic induction electric displacement etc circuit theory can be seen as an approximation of field theory circuit theory has got some limitations of frequency circuit theory though having limitations is very simple and useful for applications in many practical systems that's why it is popular field theory can deal with any system for any frequency range however circuit theory can be applied only for moderately low frequencies circuit theory cannot be used for analysis or designing of any system related with the phenomena of radiation a system dealing with radiation phenomena can be dealt with only by using field theory thank you